One of the marvelous things that happened in the summer of 68 was that 67, that summer, was so much on our minds and so many of the stories we were doing had to deal with recovering from that riot, that war we had with ourselves and our city. And the thing that, that made what the Tigers were doing even sweeter. When you're coming off something that hurt that much to something that tasted so great, your joy, your fun, your happiness, it seems to me, uh, was intensified. A lot of people thought that by the Tigers getting off to a great start in 68, really settled the city down uh, and helped people to uh, have something positive and something that everybody could pull for, and that was the Detroit Tigers. 1968 Tigers, a unique team and probably the best loved sports team in Detroit history. And they were a colorful team full of characters and full of guys that uh, loved to play on the field and off the field. The Tigers had confidence going into the World Series, although they were underdogs. They knew they had to face the great Bob Gibson. And that was the, a big problem because Gibson was an outstanding pitcher. And the opening game of the series uh, pitted uh, Gibson, who had the great earned run average, against the McLean, who had won 31. And uh, they were the two aces of uh, the two different leagues, and it was a great setup. Gibson, of course, set a strikeout record to beat the Tigers. Norm Cash is up next, and the count goes to three and two. And this pitch makes history. A standing ovation for Bob Gibson. Uh, of course, Bob Gibson just was just outstanding. Uh, he broke the all-time strikeout record, and I believe I tied the record uh, in, that, in that game for strikeouts. The batter is Al Kaline. and uh, Norm Cash, the very next hitter, he, uh, he broke the record. And a funny story about that, well, of course, it's funny now, uh, Norm Cash called me in my room and he says, thanks, Al. I says, thanks for what? We lost. He says, no. He says, you tied the record. I broke the record by striking out and I'm going to get $500 for going on television in the morning. So I just want to thank you for letting me win get $500. Bob's not quite finished. One more out to go. And the batter is Detroit's leading home run hitter, Willie Horton. It's a record 17 strikeout. Gibson also ties Lefty Gomez's record of six straight victories in World Series competition. It's a new day and new excitement. Millions of fans wonder if the underdog Tigers can shake off the effects of Bob Gibson's 17 strikeout. I mean, I, I, I knew I was pitching the second game and, and, you know, win or lose, I'm still pitching the second game. And I just went out and did my thing. Last of the night, Mickey Lowich faces Ron Davis with two out. Davis lifts a pop-up. Cash moves under. That's it. The Tigers have even the World Series at one apiece. We ended up winning eight to one. So, I mean, it really wasn't that difficult of a ball game at all. And now it's off to Detroit as the scene of the World Series shifts for the third game. In Detroit, the enthusiasm for the home team is tremendous and hopes have been reborn by Mickey Lowich's victory. We, we noticed that a lot of us were tight and, and weren't the team that we were during the season. Now keep your eye on pitcher Horner as he goes for that final out. The batter is pinch hitter Jim Price. He sends a fly ball to deep left. Lou Brock has it. It's a happy Joe Horner as the favorite Cardinals take a two to one lead in the series. Had to relax a little bit more and uh, we finally did even though we, we lost a game in Detroit. Next day there's a hangover sadness in Detroit and the skies rain down on Tiger Stadium. But series fans can't be discouraged by this. They come out anyway. For today is the occasion of the heralded rematch between Denny McLean and Bob Gibson. In the last of the ninth, the Cardinals click off a neat double play to end the ball game. Bob Gibson sets an all-time World Series record with his seventh consecutive victory. And then they got behind three games to one. It looked like it was all over. So, you know, it was just basically trying to get the guys together and, and relaxing. And we knew we, we were a good ball club. 
and we knew that we could, uh, we, we could play with the Cardinals. One more loss, and Detroit is done. But does that dampen the spirit of Detroit? Does it matter to them that only two teams in World Series history have ever come back from that kind of deficit? If two did, why can't another? Well, uh, game five was probably the most interesting day of the whole campaign for the World Series. St. Louis had actually put us down pretty good. You know, I'd, we were down three to one, like you said, and it's like, well, let's give them a good showing anyway today. Well, you know, it was a must-win game because we had uh, Mickey Lolich. And by the way, uh, the scouts throughout all of baseball thought Mickey would be the most effective pitcher against the Cardinals. And of course, McLean had the great year, unbelievable year, super pitcher. But they thought Lolich would be the guy that would give the Cardinals a lot more, uh, more trouble because he had that good sinker, that hard slider down and in, where Denny was more of a high ball pitcher. And, uh, and, uh, and of course, the Cardinals had a lot of great hitters. It's a 3-2 ball game now. And that's how it is in the Cardinal fifth when two key plays turn the series around. First with one out, Lou Brock gets his 11th base hit of the series. Horton made a good play on the rebound to hold Brock to a double. How important this is for Lolich and the Tigers soon becomes apparent. Javier is the batter. Brock has a short lead at second. Stanley's been ducking behind him. Horton gets set in left. Javier singles sharply to left field and Brock heads home. The throw to freehand is perfect and plate of Doug Harvey calls Brock out. Now let's take another look in slow motion. Look at Freehan's left leg blocking the plate. This could be the crucial play of this 1968 World Series. The Cardinals fail to score in the fifth. As Tiger manager Mayo Smith makes a crucial decision and lets Mickey Lolich bat for himself. And all of a sudden the out is made in front of me and I, I stand up and turn back towards the dugout and nothing's happening. I mean, Gates Brown, our super duper pinch hitter, is supposed to be coming up out of the dugout, but he wasn't coming out of the dugout. And I was standing there looking at Mayo Smith, the manager, and he was signaling me to go up to home plate. And Mayo was signaling to me, you know, he puts his hands up like, you're hitting. And I'm like, what? <laughs> What's going on here, you know? And um, I ended up hitting a little dunker fly ball into right center field. And I, I was yelling at that thing and swearing at it and everything in the world to get it to fall in for a base hit. And, and it did. And that was really the thing that started the rally that uh, brought us back. That game was uh, was a must game, of course. It was, uh, they were ahead of us, so we were two runs down. and. Uh, they brought in a uh, left-handed pitcher that uh, I fouled a lot of pitches off and, and was able to, then able to uh, 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 bloop a sort of half line drive type of hit into right center field. With one out and his team trailing by one run, he's the man on the spot. The count's one and one, and K-Line loops a hit into right center. In comes Lolich and McAuliffe with a tying and lead run. It's four to three Detroit. K-Line is having a great series. We scored runs that inning and ended up winning the game, you know, so everything worked out. And the Tigers rallied and uh, took the series back to St. Louis, won the sixth game, and uh, then eventually set up that great pitching duel in the seventh between Lowlich and Bob Gibson. And uh, it, it was just one of those things where uh, Denny pitched and uh, pitched well, and uh, in St. Louis for, we, uh, we scored those 10 runs in one inning. And uh, I think Norm Cash and I both got uh, two hits in one inning. The bases are loaded again as K-Line gets his second single of the inning and two more runs come home. Norm Cash gets his second single of the inning to add another run. Not too many people have done before. Both Norm and I were able to get base hits in, uh, two base hits in one inning. And we went on to win and of course it uh, all came down to game seven. Detroit has tied the series at three games off. A few days ago, it was a cardinal runaway, and now it goes down to the final day. And all of a sudden, Mayo Smith, you know, signals me to, you know, come down towards the end of the dugout, towards the tunnel. So, I mean, I walk down there, and he takes me down in the tunnel. And he says, uh, K 
can you pitch tomorrow? And I says, well, sure, Mayo, there's no problem. I mean, if you need me to pitch a couple innings for you, I says, I can pitch in relief. He says, no, no, he says, not relief. He says, I want you to start. And I says, what? <laughs> Game seven, can Bob Gibson be beaten? Can the Tigers stop Lou Brock? Is Mickey Lowley going to wind up as the hero of this series? Of course, we had, to, we had the, the big man on the mound for us and uh, Mickey Lowlich and uh, coming back with just a couple days rest. And from what, from what I understand and, and talking to Mickey about that game seven was that Mayo asked him, can you give us a few innings? I mean, of course, uh, Mickey says, sure, I can give you a few innings. And then after a couple innings, Mayo said, can you give me another one? And of course, and Mickey would say, yeah, I give you another one. And, and he ended up throwing a complete game. Tim McCarver's up, two outs in the ninth. It's a pop-up. Bill Freehand waits for it. The Tigers are the new world champion. My fondest memory of that year is the seventh game in the seventh inning when uh, Northup got the triple and then uh, Lolich bore down and Mickey was a guy who came back with only two days rest. Had to face the Bob Gibson, probably the most dominating pitcher at that time in baseball, and out pitched the great Bob Gibson finished it off and got the championship trophy for the Tigers. Uh, without Lolich, of course, uh, that would not have happened because he, he kept a very good uh, ball club, uh, the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, from scoring a lot of runs. The thing that was kind of a revelation for me is that the Tigers that year were really one hell of a baseball. I mean, one hell of a baseball team. And Mickey Lolich winning three games. Uh, this quiet, big, burly guy, didn't have much to say, shows up like the pro he was, and just does it. And he was a great hero, Mickey Lolich was. He was the MVP and three game winner of the World Series. And certainly that alone ought to put him in the Hall of Fame. I'm glad I pitched then because throughout my life around Michigan, wherever I go, everybody remembers me as the guy that pitched in the 68 World Series. They forget about the 13 years I pitched, they forget about the great year I had in 71, but they remember the 68 World Series. So I'm really glad I had a chance to do it.